What did I just read? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to What Did I Just Read? I'm L.A. And I'm Holly. And what are we <laughs> reading today, Holly? We read Bride by Allie Hazelwood. And I have to say, I was not thrilled when you brought up this as a pick, but I knew that it was going to be a popular p- book this year. And so I was like, Ugh, we have to cover it. We have to. Because I, I feel like the last couple of Allie Hazelwood books that I've read, I've just been like, it's too much cheese, too much, you know? Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. They were too much Allie Hazelwood. Mm-hmm. And then I read Bride. Holy guacamole. LA. Are you a are you a Hazelwood supporter now, finally? <laughs> yes! Oh my god. This is my hands down my favorite one of her books. <gasps> oh wow. It's my least favorite of her books. <laughs> no. No. I don't know. Oh I was my not god. into it. <gasps> I know. My know. my little fantasy heart was just pitter pattering the whole time. Yeah, it's wow. a slow burn type yeah. romance. Mm-hmm. Not a fan. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. I don't know. I read and you read it too. I read the fake mate. Yeah. I really enjoyed that one. I don't think you liked it as much. No, I mean, okay, it's they're very different. The fake mate and the bride. The, who, who's the fake make by who wrote that um she wrote the nanny as well i forget her name oh my gosh my phone fake me is written by literally just read it elevator music this is elevator music okay so the fake mate is written by lana ferguson you know i really enjoyed the fake mate for two-thirds of it and then it just got really repetitive and very cliche. And I already knew how it was going to end halfway through. So I kind of got bored. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I did appreciate that half of the book was porn, but I got a little bored. And so that's why that book was a three star to me. Bride had a lot more going on. There was a lot more world building that mm-hmm. I, you know, you know, I love, I love it so much. And Allie Hazelwood brought in a lot of biology to the characters, even though I do have a slight qualm with that, but we'll, I'll talk about it later. And so I just, I really liked the world of Bride. I liked the character development of Bride, whereas the, the banter and the fake mate was really good, but also in Bride, I felt like it was very good. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I I couldn't put it down. Mm-hmm. And so I liked that aspect of it. I just wasn't vibing. I think, you know, that situation with like great book, wrong time. Yeah. I think it was this. Oh, no. Oh, that makes me so sad because this is my favorite of Allie Hazelwood. It was like she took all of my notes that I never gave her and wrote this book. Because whereas, I mean, you still have this massive man, but she's also tall, but he's also just big, you know? So it's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she still did the Allie Hazelwood thing with, with like big man, little girl, but she's still a big girl in like in the world. And so that I appreciated that I was like, you know what? I'm going to check that box. That's cool. She toned down her quirkiness. Yeah. Which yeah, I really appreciated. True. The jokes had more meaning. That her quips as a character, Misery's quips, had more meaning. Very true. Yeah. It was a lot darker and serious novel, I think, that she's ever written. God, do I love it. I gobble that up. I think I'm going to talk to you and I'll probably change my mind at the end of it because I do. Mm -hmm. I think every time I talk to you, I either like a book more or like it less (laughs) because I get to talk about it. I think the ending of this, it sets it up for a second book, a companion novel. Right. Very, very excited about that because I think that if we end up reading it, it's going to, and it's the right book at the right time. I think I'll be like, oh, wait a second. Okay. I really did like everything. Yeah. Yeah. 
it, um, I don't know if I want to bring it up now, but that was actually something that I have a little bit of qualm with was the ending. And not, <laughs> of not course, the, of course, but it wasn't, but it wasn't the, the, the reaching for like the next book. It, what would hmm. the hinting of a next novel that I really liked. I honest to God, and I don't say this often. I needed like, I like, I needed a baby at the end of this book really or like i needed her to be pregnant is that weird i feel like if i'm we if i'm reading a where book to me it just like breathes breeding trope and so at the I'm end of this book she gonna be pregnant with a half where half vampire baby and i cannot wait i cannot wait but i think no, I'm gonna i like wait. How, i liked it I liked how she didn't do that. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh God, I hated it. I desperately need it. Like you're, she hinted at it throughout the whole book with a half human, half wear babies, you know? Well, not having the, the right mechanics, the hardware, the right hardware. Mm -hmm. Clearly she does though. Mm, for sex. Yeah. No, but, but maybe not. But they don't for... know. Nobody knows. Nobody's tried. Maybe I've just read too many Ice Planet Barbarians this last couple of weeks. And that could be it. That could be it. But I so desperately needed that half vampire, half werewolf baby. Kind of made me sad I didn't get it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm not. <laughs> I think it was great. In that part, it's so funny how me and you read something and we're so dead on. And then sometimes yeah. we're just like, we miss each other. And I think that she's very divisive with us and mm -hmm. her writing. I think when she writes something that I don't necessarily like, you like, mm -hmm. and, she, and something that you don't like, I like. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. With her books. It's interesting. It's with so her interesting. specifically. Yeah. I think another thing that I struggled with this book was its general, with her writing structure of it. I didn't understand the prologue. I didn't... Oh, uh, the wedding scene? Yeah, I didn't really like that. I thought that that was unnecessary to put the whole wedding scene in the very beginning of the book. I feel like I would have gotten just as much from it being put exactly where it needed to be in the timeline of the book percent agree yeah and then, I didn't like the jumping back and forth that she did that often yeah that's what I'm saying yeah like that and I got really confused if I was going into the past or but frequently you were in the present and she's thinking about the past and I got really confused by that and I didn't really like those bits same 100%. I love uh, a flashback type story when it goes, what's the best one that we read? I think it was structured really well. It was not funny. You should ask. It was the second one that we read once more with feeling. Oh yeah. Once more with feeling. She did it really well. She did three different timelines. Like she did kind of like two past timelines, like when they were at when camp. They're at Anyways. camp. Yeah. And when they were in the boy band girl, like pop group and then uh -huh. present day yeah yeah and I thought wow that is the most jumpy timeline at least in a romance novel that I've ever read mm -hmm. except there's other ones that will jump forward right but they won't go back they'll start at the beginning and then a month's passed two years has passed you know whatever, yeah, or whatever. like over this summer and then back to the present yeah yeah but this was just it was it was kind of it was a little convoluted for me. yeah mm -hmm. yeah but I did like how she had dual perspective. So that was, well, sort of. I mean. Not really. I didn't. Like one. And the way that you're talking about dual perspective, no. Big old raspberry. No. I did not need his little, like, one to three sentences above the chapters. I just found that so cheesy. I liked it. I knew you would. Every time I read this, I'm like, oh my God, LA is gobbling this the fuck up. I'm just like, I, I hate it. It was it's so like that little... syrupy and so gross to me. Yes. It's that little tinge of looking into what he's thinking and feeling because my favorite is dual perspective. Yeah. So it wasn't too much. It felt a little fourth wingy with, you know, how Zayden has yeah. the last chapter. Oh, it I kind see of what you're felt. Saying. You're right. It did. Yeah. 
yeah. Did you miss so not kind of, having like his full perspective? A little bit. Yeah. Because I think we had just, me and you just finished a book. No, I'm sorry. Not finished. I'm reading a book where it's back and forth with the mm -hmm. girl and the guy and I'm eating that book up. I love it. But yeah, no, it's just, it's really, I love having both perspectives. I think it just adds to it because I don't really like the miscommunication trope that much, but yeah. when you have one and you have the two perspectives, you're just kind of like, oh. Yeah. It, and this this book is kind of full of the miscommunication. How do you think Allie Hazelwood has accomplished that in this book? Do you think- Lack of, communi lack of communication. Mystery to me seemed like an ignorant idiot at times, not knowing like the different species and like what- goes on and what happens yeah so I have a huge qualm with that because she mentions in the book about how she's not a biologist so she doesn't know this but at the same time throughout the whole book she's mentioning these very scientific terms about why a werewolf's blood is green why a vampire's blood is purple you know and at the same time I'm thinking okay you know all these things but not the big issues of the difference between your bodies I just yeah. yeah no and you're also at she's misery is at a station of stature to where it's a political you know part of a political family right and she was collateral that whole situation with being with the humans and stuff she learned about the right. human world and lived with them how do you not share information about that with the wares I just, her trying to make the wares seem like really exclusive and closed off, but you don't know foundational things about what mating means compared to like yeah. a non-mate. And uh, there were uh, some definite holes within the plot in that way. I think so. I just really liked, I guess, again, going back to the fake mate, because that is literally my only Omegaverse knowledge that I have. It's because I didn't know about nodding. I didn't know about scenting. I didn't know about... It gets all... me. It gets me. <laughs> Holy guacamole. I do love all of that. <laughs> she did it very lightly in this book, though. She approached each topic that I think is stereotypical, or at least mm -hmm. not stereotypical, but maybe established in that type of subgenre. Yeah. Sub yeah, she did was... like a step by step integration of this is this world. Come inside of it with me. A, yeah. a, a gradual introduction into it. Yeah, because I guess not everybody would know like what nodding is and what that means. And in this book, it's very you're discovering it with misery. So right. with the character in the book and. Maybe that's good for some people that have never tiptoed into the Omegaverse. I feel like people that have read the Omegaverse would have an irk with that, in my opinion. I think that they would feel like it's too spoon-fed, if you will. Yeah, you know what? I, I totally agree with that opinion. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally do. At the same time, I think, though, as we were talking about before, I feel like her character should know about the anatomy of a werewolf and the the anatomy of all like that should be her political value is that she is taught everything right yeah but i guess that's not really her political value she's just there to live or die i don't know it's that part is a little could have been yeah. built it could have been built up more yes yeah, it could have been built up more, which is interesting because at the, at the flip side of that statement, though, this world is pretty, pretty, uh, I think that the political structures in this world are very interesting as well uh -huh. and how she lightly talked about it, right? Where are we set in this story? Do we know? Is it Seattle? Oh, God. Oh, or is it a fictional world? No, it's definitely in the United States. Because he's going mm -hmm. to California at one point. Right. Right. To me, they were in, actually, I don't really know. To me, it was just like in New York, East, Northeastern. It, it, to me, it didn't feel like Seattle, but maybe it was. I don't actually, 
I generally, I don't know. I, I thought Seattle because how I construct it in my head, which could be wrong or it could be no offense to Miss Hazelwood. It could be just not very good at explaining that part. But it seemed that they were on some sort of like border with a mm. bridge, right? And then yeah. you had your vampire human and then your wares that were in kind of like a wildernessy type woodsy Okay, I'm area. getting a I'm getting a very clear twilight vibe now right Right. and i i'm completely agreeing with you yes seattle you're right you're right forks yeah Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. yeah so but then they have this structure the vampires do that are like very vancouver yes like very metal and and glass and yeah okay metropolitan oh my you're reshaping the picture of this book and i needed it Thank you. So sorry. I might be totally wrong. No, I I, I needed this wrong. because I think I, I rebuilt it in my head because whenever I go into a fantasy, that's kind of my go to. I'm just rebuilding from what the author gives me. And I think what you're giving me is probably what she built it around. Yeah. 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 I think so. I mean, maybe, maybe who knows? It makes sense. What you're, t- what you're putting down and picking up and it's making sense to me. So they don't, I guess for deck in this world for decades, these species, whenever they interact, shit happens, right? Yeah. So there have been marriages and the so to keep the peace between the species, there are things politically wise that they do in order to ensure peace. So I think yeah. that the humans are have a democratic structure. So they have elected positions where they have councilmen and governors. Typical, like and, what we all have now. Right. Vampires are monarchy almost. So it's you're born into certain families who hold power. A, a position. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And then the wares are a combination of both, if you will, because you have a leader, you have, you the have alpha. an alpha and you have to be born an alpha. It's not just. It's well, you could down. challenge the alphas. You, no, because that's what you do. Did. You do, but you also, but also Cohen, who is a leader, an alpha leader of another pack, inherited that pack because his aunt or his mother was the previous alpha, and then that's right. he was born an alpha, and so he inherited that pack once that family member died. So there is that that's aspect right. as well. But you can also, within the wear community, challenge another alpha to win the rule of that pack. And that's another one of my icks, because what did he do to win that position, right? Lo. So Lo is the main character in this book. He challenged the crazy guy's name. So Lo challenges Roscoe to get control of the pack. Yes. I mean, he did it and he he won. He killed him. I don't understand. What do you mean? But, but you don't always have to kill the alpha. They were like, what was the challenge? Did they like fight each other? Did, think, was yeah. there like an obstacle course? And then he died at the end? Like what? They I didn't think go into detail. She didn't it go into detail, great. but I think. Oh, I think it's are clear they, that they had to fight. Are they and in that wolf he killed form? him. Well, are they in wolf form? Are they in human form? I To me, and they're, they're in wolf form. Because it's primal. It's primal. To fight like that so they're in wolf form what and what hap what hap tell me more details that's uh, about yeah. that so because then it's like if everybody is so intimidated by low because he's the alpha and he's not gonna oh and then there's huddles too so there's, in a pack there's like certain huddles and huddles are like groups of people i guess right yeah, that was not explained very well. The huddles, like the, is it like families or is it like groups of friends and families? I didn't understand the huddles within a pack. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're so, led by lieutenants or like their commanders or whatever that term was. Yeah. So the alpha has seconds who are the leaders of the huddles who also advise yes. the alpha. That was a little confusing, the whole huddle situation. But at the end of the day, did I care? No, not yeah. really. And also, to me, they fought in wolf form, and he killed him in wolf form. And then the other okay. seconds who didn't want him to be alpha also fought him, and he killed them in wolf form. I think if I can make a prediction, mm-hmm. in 
if she writes a, a companion novel and it's Cohen's story, right? It's going to be about somebody challenging him as an alpha, and then we'll get more details ooh, of that. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do you think it's going to be like Emery? Someone's from someone from Emery's pack. Maybe like it's going to be a California based, yeah, situation. Yeah. So how I did you so. pro- how did you pronounce her best friend's name? So this whole time, <laughs> our lead character Misery. She is the whole trope in this book is a marriage of convenience Mm -hmm. with so you have a vampire misery who is marrying a alpha werewolf to bring peace to their two communities. So she was once a collateral to the humans because that was their political structure was that she was sent to go live with the humans at eight years old and the humans sent a human child to live with the vampires who is also eight. So she lived with the humans for 10 years and at 18, she got to go and then be free. And during that time, she lived with her, she calls her her sister. In my head, I called her Serena, but I think it's Serena. I called her Serena the whole time. Yeah. So I think because uh, in, in Romania, my son has a girl in her, in his class called Serena spelled exactly the same name, same way. And so that's how in my head I was pronouncing it. But then I was looking at it. I was like, Oh, other people are probably saying Serena. Yeah. I think it's Serena. So we have misery who is a collateral for the humans and collateral basically means peace because the vampires are sending a young child of one of theirs and the humans are sending a young child of one of theirs. And it's basically to keep the peace. Like if the vampires do anything to the humans, then they'll kill the vampires collateral and vice versa. And misery is the vampires collateral. She also is the daughter of what exactly does her father, what what is his position? He's like head of the vampires. He's like the lead. He's a councilman. Yeah. So so he's not, he's just of a prestigious, he's not a leader of any sort. He's not a king. He's not anything like that. So mm-hmm. I guess we should retract when we talk about monarchy. There isn't like a king or queen. There's just, maybe it's more pal- parliamentary a little bit, but they're from but a he's very. Like, but he's very like a puppet master throughout the whole book. Yes. He's pulling all he's of powerful. the strings. He's very powerful. Yeah, he's but a he's powerful, not... he's a powerful vampire on his own and he's powerful politically. And he's he's been at it for a while. Oh, that's another thing too is like vampires can die, they age the same as humans, they don't have super speed or strength, right? Vampires are super weak. Oh, I hated yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Total <laughs> dial were, down on that. They were like the worst of all three species between like Humans and wares and vampires. Vampires are the fucking worst. Yeah. But they do have a problem, which is their population is dwindling. Yeah, they're, not they're not getting reading. a lot. Yeah. And I think it was kind of explained, which is that vampires aren't really super. Well, it, it's not explained why the population was gone down, but it does explain no. why, why they're not super monogamous and they don't have. Well, they're not monogamous because they're not. There's no babies. So they're all just thinking, well, we're just going to have sex all the time with anybody, whoever we want, without protection because we want our numbers to go up. We want babies at any time. Yep. Yep. And Misery is a miracle because she's she's a twin. And her brother, Owen? What's his Owen. name? Owen. Also, yeah. huge issue with Owen's name. How come Misery is named Misery because their mother died at birth, like after having her? <laughs> Like, they're twins. She died after having both of them, not just Misery. Misery's name is, m- mis- like, terrible misery. misery. And then Owen is, like, I mean, equally terrible. It, Owen is worse than Misery, honestly. Sorry, all Owens. But, like, how come he gets a name like Owen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't know. Couldn't tell you. Anyway. That was a that was a minor irk of mine. Well, it's very patriarchal. Patri, I can't say that word. You said but, it. Yeah, I think at the end it's interesting with all the conflict that happens. But there's no 
sort of peace between, well, there was a peace between the wares and the vampires and I guess the humans a little bit, but they didn't have a, they didn't have a collateral. They didn't establish that type of peace. Right. Right. If vampires approach the were border though, like the wares would kill the vampires and like these and vice these... versa as well. Like if the wares approach the vampire border, the vampires would kill them. Yeah, but there is no there there's always this fear that something would disbalance, you know, and they talked a lot about population numbers. Like humans have the numbers, right? They have the people. Yeah. Vampires don't, but because they have this relationship, the wares aren't gonna attack the vampires because they have the humans on their side. Right. But then something happens with the humans, which is one of their, was it a governor? Yeah. The governor gets, there's an election. He, there's an election. Uh, Garcia or whatever her name was wins out. And so there's, so that's a big hit to the vampires because and now she, they don't. And she refuses to meet with Misery's dad. Which is smart yes. move on her part because that means Misery's. she will not be because that means that this govern this new governor will not be thralled by him, which is like this basically hypnosis that the vampires can do. It's like their only true power is to thrall. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, that is the only light light touch of the vampire magic. Oh, is- it's so frustrating to me. I was so frustrated by that. And they have, well, they also have elf ears. Yeah. Is that an Omegaverse thing? With vampires? I yeah. mean, it's a vampire thing, not a werewolf thing. Is it a vampire thing? The pointy ears? Eh, it could be. I don't know. I always think of like fairy elfish, st- not vampires. Vampires, I think of transforming into bats or well, I, pale yeah, skin. I mean, I guess these are born vampires, right? So in that sense, I'm okay with them having this quality of a pointy ear, you know, Okay. compared okay. to a turned vampire. Okay. There aren't turned vampires, though, in this book. It's just they're all born. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because everything okay. in this book is about genetics, which yeah. is very Allie Hazelwood. I love that you just said that because that makes so much more sense now. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So something needs to happen to the vampires in order to secure their livelihood or so we think and their political stance and Mm -hmm. make sure that they don't approach extinction. Yeah. So Misery's dad, the high ranking councilman, has the idea to... (laughs) He basically... he He decides that she's going to marry the new alpha low off to yeah to yeah. his daughter yeah. yeah and then also and now and she's being collateral turned, yeah she's being collateral part two of her life yeah well but then they get aware collateral so they get yeah. a person from the pack to be exchanged yeah and we kind of learned down the path down like the path of the line i don't know down like the plot line that the where who they give to the to the vampires is supposed to be low's mate and I hated, I hated all of that i did i mean at the end that like it's revealed at the end of the book that she's obviously not his mate in case you didn't get it but just to make her more important because they wanted somebody who is related to low and of course low was not going to give his half sister to them so he pretended like gabby this the girl who he gave to as collateral was his mate and I was just like, this is just so convenient. This is just convenient writing. And- I thought it was, yeah, it was like Ali Hazel with the author used the excuse of, well, misery is strongly attracted to low, but like she can't, she can't be because she's not, because he's involved with someone else and she would yeah. never, you know. I, so I, I have qualms with this really strong attraction to low because throughout from the very beginning of the book she senses his blood different from Mm -hmm. everybody else's Mm -hmm. so at the beginning of the book i feel like as a reader we are being told that he is like the equivalent of a vampire's mate because she enjoys his scent his smell his blood is so different la's like giving me finger guns yes 
Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and so this whole time, we're getting this vibe that vampires can have mates because she is getting these heated scents from him, from his blood. And it's never, Mm -hmm. never talked about. She never admits how good he smells and how good he tastes to her. Now, granted, he's the only person she's ever tasted, like, from the actual person. But still, she senses that he smells different from everybody else. And she never says anything. And it's never talked about. And Lo also says that she smells different, which we find out, obviously, because he's strongly attracted to her. And that's his mate. But, like, so are we mixing certain things between wares and vampires and humans? Is this just a thing about genetics that we're more similar than we think? I don't know. I was just really upset that clearly she was also attracted to him. It was a faded mate situation. And it was never confronted on both sides. Only on yeah, his it was just side. just on his. Yeah. Perfectly. Perfectly said. Yes. Exactly. Several times throughout the book, she mentions, Misery mentions the smells of other people and how they do not smell as good as low. Multiple yeah. times through, throughout the whole book, right? Yes. And I think that always, that irked me, is that it was, she never talked about it with Lo at all. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? I just feel like that would be one of the first things that I would tell somebody. That when, like, the feel started to happen and we started to talk to one another, you know, or when she first like, tasted him, I feel mm-hmm. like I would admit those feelings that I was having. Mm-hmm. I just thought that no. was so weird. Get it. Yep. You know what I did like though? Sorry, switching gears. It mm-hmm. is, I think for in this book, I can't remember the last one. I guess it was, uh, oh, anyways, I'm going to get my thought out and then think about it later. But the friendship between Serena and Misery, at times it seemed a little obsessive, but I think that she explained it down well. Or maybe not, but it just seemed like she was looking, she could not find her friend. So her friend gets abducted Mm -hmm. and the whole reason. Well, that's why why she agrees to do this fake marriage, not this fake marriage, this, what do you call it? This forced marriage. Arranged marriage. This this is why she does the arranged marriage is because low, whatever. Moreland, Moreland or something. Low Moreland is a name that spikes interest to her because her bff wrote it down somewhere like his name ish and she's a planner yeah and she's just like yes that guy i will arrange marriage him because it has something to do with serena's disappearance you know and i was like that's a far-fetched it's a bit much little little far-fetched i mean it yeah it was just a little much i mean she was i get kind of the mystery allure in it because serena is an investigative journalist or reporter for the Herald, and she mm-hmm. really does financial stuff. But it just it just seemed a little. Mm. You, it's fun at the end because when you find out what Serena really is or how she really is a part of Misery's life, which was a total twist for me, and I really enjoyed. I was not expecting that at all. Yeah, the Serena twist. No, because I was, because I was so, so Misery and Lo get married. She's having growing pains, like figuring out that whole marriage. But Lo has, which is the cutest thing, Lo has a sister who is five years old, but she thinks she's six six. because she's almost. No, she's six. She's six, almost seven, but she constantly holds up six fingers because she's currently six and is going Mm -hmm. to be turning seven, but is telling everybody that she's seven. And she's, she's the cutest. Well, you find out later that apparently Lowe's mother had a trip, like, well, not a tryst, but well, sort of with, yeah, had a, an affair yeah, with a human, with a human and got pregnant with Leanna, Leanna. And what's so secretive about this is that the inner species babies or whatever is just not a known Thing. and so it's Which scary because people bananas don't bananas to me crazy when Lowe brought up his time in germany as a 
architect or whatever and how everybody lived kind of oh, like it's just not... like well isn't aren't isn't everybody doing what's what in germany aren't they fucking like isn't, aren't isn't they everybody fucking you're all together and he didn't he admit to like having sex with humans yes having a relationship yeah but i guess he didn't make a baby with a human so he's just like eh. men so maybe so maybe there is but it's just extremely rare to conceive something like yeah. have an inner species so then that means nobody has anybody nobody has any knowledge about these half breeds if you will yeah so but it is, is it is like now that you're bringing it up it is so silly to me to right. think of all of these right. big words of like genetics and the physiology of the different species that misery is throwing out to us as readers and yet nobody knows nobody knows about these mixed babies la you're you're poking plot holes and i'm not I'm so sorry I'm it's not it I'm not enjoying this. It's making me angry. <laughs> <laughs> None of her other, it's, it's just so weird because all of her other books are contemporary romances. Right. And so I think this is her first like, Freud. Freud? Freud? Yeah. Freud? Yeah. Freud? 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 Yeah. And... <laughs> paranormal. <laughs> it's a paranormal. Um, yes. So you're bound to get a couple of things. Maybe yeah. a few. Mm-hmm big things you know lost in the mix yeah but these yeah, are yeah, yeah. you know they're how you're explaining them are a lot more glaring i know so it's just meh meh so anyway oh God, I'm, just, find... I'm so surprised that this is also you complaining about this and not I know. oh my god i just gobbled it up when you wrote texted me saying that uh-huh. this is a book that you loved of hers i was like <laughs> oh that's interesting <laughs> I was like, I still do. Life? It's still my favorite of all of her books. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I want her to go back to the STEM romances. I, I think. Well, she's coming out with one later this year, which I'm Ugh, okay. All about. I'm all about. <laughs> um, you're going to put that on my pleasure wheel. We'll see if you deserve it. <laughs> You have to be a good girl, L.A. I can't with you right now. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we haven't even talked about a quarter of this book. But, no, we haven't at is, all. Which is fine because we eh. haven't even... We haven't gotten to the, like the real, so all of this shit happens. She builds this world. You have this arranged marriage. You have the political struggles. You have this question mark of half breeds. You have the, the missing best friend. So you, all of this, and then the wares are also having an internal struggle because Lo, when he took over as Alpha, who killed the previous Alpha, that mate emory who lives in california is, is starting she started like a loyalist band she's just like the, i mean well i don't need to do i need to bring politics into this from our real world i don't I, think so I, anyway <laughs> <laughs> she's like nobody voted for him in it's just like <laughs> There's just so, there's so much chaos like going on. Yeah. There's so many different subplots that are happening. They're mm-hmm. trying to figure out, yeah, which I think is good, but, but bad at the same time. Cause you're mm-hmm. like, what is, what is going on? Well, anyways, can we skip to the part yep. where so the whole internal political battle craziness has nothing to do with the, the outside world it's all internal wear stuff it's all inter- well it doesn't have to involve serena's disappearance right like it doesn't yeah. have to do that oh and then there was an attempted murder on this is all political then there was attempted murder oh, the, on the capt- misery the- Oh yeah. Well, there there's the, the attempted butter? yeah. So there's the attempted murder on Misery and the attempted kidnapping of Anna. Okay, kidnapping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's several things happening within the wear community that you're like, oh shit, things are going down and you think it's all just wear based. Mm-hmm. Because you but you've built cuz Allie Hazelwood has built up this whole wear underground community that's trying to upheaval Lowe's ruling basically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep which kick, kick which out. honestly feels really 
silly to me. Especially it's because too much. It, too the, much. the whole wear stuff with Emery, I didn't really like the whole loyalist thing. It felt too Republican Democrat to me. And I didn't, I guess we needed it as like a throw from away from like the vampires or the humans attacking the wear community. But at the same time, I was just like, no, the rules are somebody confronts and fights the alpha. They beat the alpha. They become the alpha. Right. So I don't yeah. understand how somebody could then try to undermine and say that he's not the true alpha. How does that work politically in the wear community? I didn't that didn't make sense to me at all. This whole Emory thing. Yeah, but I think it gives the author two avenues to build onto the relationship between Misery and Lowe. One being that Misery goes and helps stop, though it was going to be stopped anyway, the abduction of Anna. So right. that's showing her loyalty to the wares, right? And then the mm -hmm. second part is the whole trip to California with her and Lo to talk to Emery to suss it out. You get on the plane on the plane there to believe that they're in a actual private plane. I loved her her mm -hmm. line. She had a line there was like, "Honey, are we rich?" <laughs> <laughs> I think I read that line like three times because I was just like, "Oh my god, I fucking love this because she's just so cheeky yeah. and so cute. I just love Misery as a character." Yeah. It's Even though she can be infuriating, but very, but they go, she, he does the scenting on her, which is, in my opinion, that was the sexiest scenting scene Holy I've ever. Guacamole. It's just like necks <sighs> rubbing against necks and oh my God. And skin his on lips, skin. When and... his lips like caressed her like under chin. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Thank this is God. It only took two pages to get it there it took a really long time jesus christ well then but then you're finally out of the house you're away from the younger sister so she mm -hmm. won't be hearing any boinking and you think for sure this is the, <laughs> this is the moment or sneaking into anybody's bedrooms because anna likes to do that um yes. so it gives her so she has to pull them away so that they could have sexy time but they yeah. don't have sexy time at emory's house they, they get kind of do though mm -hmm. Mm -mm. No, mm -hmm. no, there was no, yes, there was no, there was no, there was no, there was because he pulls her away to go do like, like, let's go do the computer things. Don't you need a feed? And so they go and do the computer things. And then she's like, he's like, there's like people coming. And so he's like, you need to feed off of me. And she's like, no, I've never done that before. And he's like, you need to feed off of me as like an excuse, whatever. Okay. Anyway, so she does it. And she like dry humps him. This is another dry humping book for us. She it's like dry a, humps yeah. him. Mm -hmm. Holy guacamole. But that's that's it, Holly. That's it. I'm like, where's the smooching? You're you're it's a single bed trope. You guys are sleeping smooching in the on same his room. neck. That's how. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Get fingers in there. Do something. <laughs> no. I don't She's care. a virgin, I LA. She's a virgin. We have to be delicate. Let's talk about the sex scene then, because that was frustrating. <laughs> um. <laughs> so I'm just gonna skip. I do. Right to, I so do that... appreciate though the fact that she is like a 25 year old virgin because of her upbringing. That yeah. made total sense to me, and how she's just totally alone in her own world, her own universe within these worlds that she's had to live in right i well i thought she was gonna twist it and be like well this is an alpha and alphas are like highly protective and mm -hmm. like the sexiest thing of an alpha is to have somebody that's untouched and so i thought she was gonna play in uh... that but she she didn't she like which i liked like she i like she that obviously, yeah she mm -hmm. obviously touched on it but she she There's didn't a lot like of touching later yeah but there's no penetration. So mm -mm. I, okay. Elaine so he gets the, afraid of nodding her. He doesn't want to be her. naughty. It expands in there. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Every woman loves it in every book I've read. Perfect. I mean, and then the, the whole hardware stuff, I thought it was supposed to be kitschy. It was so annoying. So like, I thought it was annoying too and stupid. I did not like the whole like, well, I don't, our hardware doesn't match. It doesn't fit. 
Ugh, like you don't just know. So- you don't know. So what Misery does for her human life in order to gain money is that she's a hacker of sorts. Like she's just very good she's, at she has she's a white hat hacker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which mm, okay. But she gets to, why do they have to go back to her apartment? So this is after California. They come back. They're just like really attracted to each other. Nothing freaking happens. But they go to her apartment for a I certain think, reason. I, I it's just to show him where she lives and to get some oh. extra clothes. I don't think it's like anything in particular. She had like a secret meeting with her brother beforehand and Gabby yeah. was there. Because this whole mm-hmm. time she's thinking like, he has a mate and I like, what am I to him? I don't feel like there was enough of like, what am I to him? Like, what are these feelings that he is having? Like, I feel if he had a mate with somebody else and, and I, uh, to Allie Hazelwood's credit, she tried to say that his mate did not feel the same way as him because he felt since she was a vampire, she was not feeling the same way as him. And that's how he felt. And he was basically saying that, like, a mate might not feel the same way. And so his mating situation was very much one-sided. And here she is getting into a relationship with him where he is clearly in love with somebody else, but also very much acting like he's in love with her. There's so many contradictory feelings on her side that for me as a reader, I was just like, we need to talk about this. Yeah. Yes. More explanation. Yeah. More explanation. I just, and there was a lot, there was a lot of explanation. It just didn't hit. It didn't land. No, it didn't land. It was too, it was too little and too throw away the explanations. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we get to her apartment and they're finally, well, they're alone again and they're in her apartment, which by the way is dusted. And I thought for sure they're going to stumble upon Serena. Like Serena's going to walk in because she hasn't been to that apartment in two, three months or whatever. Yeah. And he, they finally, they finally, finally start making out, right? Yeah. Does the wall scene, throws her against the wall, blah, blah, blah. Well, because the, she's like a computer nerd or whatever, they start talking about their body parts as like hardware. Yeah. And that hardware and she software. Might, software. Yeah. Oh, so fucking stupid. She has, so she then, has the software, LA. She so loves shut him. Up. I can't. I can't. As a person that works in tech. <laughs> LA, this, you're a this, programmer. You should this, understand this, all of this language. No. <laughs> no. I can't. I can't. I, this no, is why you no, hated no. this book. It doesn't work for me. I can't, I can't do it. It was like, so then, so then like she holds him while he nods so that he, and also, also here's another thing. Here's another thing. Tell is that, it. sorry. No, is I love that it. In the Omega verse, mm-hmm. when you not, you can only not with your mate. mate. So mm-hmm. it's, yeah. So it's not like you're not in, you know, any, any woman that you see you, it's just your mate. Right. She doesn't know that. Because so nobody knows nods, anything. Yeah. Why not? So <laughs> then which when he <laughs> Why not the not? <laughs> <laughs> You're so mad. I love it. I can't. <laughs> I just am so infuriated with this book. So then when he knots in her hand, which is sexy, but also mm-hmm. like he fucking knows that like she is his mate. She starts asking the questions like, what is it called? What's the name? What is this? You know what he does? He shuts her down and says, you don't, because she asked the question, am I your yeah. mate? And he's, you shouldn't be using or throwing around. Oh, the wear terms. Na- terms. Oh, that. Oh, that. Yeah. LA's Done. like, shut it down. No, no, no. no. Yeah. I'm belittling gonna, her, I'm... belittling, belittling, belittling her mind. Yeah. Yes. yes. And I, at that point, I was like, I'm done with you, Lo. Like, I like I liked you. I was vibing with it and all this other yeah. stuff. You get to this pivotal moment, mm-hmm. which is also you're pulling out the rug from my final sexy time. It's been 300 fucking pages. I'm done. What's his reasoning? Like, why is he? And he has a reason later. Get, it's not good. It's not good enough. So then he like, and then he leaves. He just leaves her in the apartment Mm -hmm, and she mm -hmm. sits there and the scene where she, cause she doesn't have tear ducts, fucking weird, but she doesn't, she can't cry. She just sits in her room with her head. I would prefer for her to cry blood than not to cry at all. Exactly. It was weird. 
but she just sits, I don't she need, just sits I also there. like don't because Allie Hazelwood mentions how many times she thinks about crying throughout the whole book and that to mm-hmm. me is so annoying I would rather cry. her just cry blood or whatever I don't even care at this point I just want her to cry like like a freaking like horn toad you know what I mean mm-hmm. 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 look it up for everybody who doesn't live in Texas <laughs> <laughs> But that's what I wanted. Like, just cry. Like, figure out a way, Allie. You know? Mm-hmm. Well, so then is Mick, who is one of Lowe's seconds, who used to serve underneath the old Alpha, but yeah. he decided to, you know, throw in his loyalty with Lowe. Yeah. He's assigned well, by Lowe to go and pick go and pick Misery up. Yeah, and throughout and... the whole book, just to, like, step on your toes a little bit. Yes. No, she, no. He's built this whole relationship with Misery. This whole time, they've had this friendly banter, this one-on-one where he's guarding her and he lets her loose, kind of lets her do her thing, and then lets her talk to her brother in the tongue, which is the vampire language. What the fuck was that about as well? I loved the conversation between her and Owen, like Uh the secret conversation. Funny, but like... You didn't like the tongue? No. Really? I did. Why? The piece of their history, LA. Oh, for fuck's sake. You can have... (laughs) No. I don't know. I like super strength. No, you, you can't, can't. You can't. Live they get. Forever. They get language. That's what they get. LA is so finished with this book. Oh my god, I loved it. <laughs> because here's this. <laughs> the only reason is what you're about to talk about is this next section of the book, which is 50 pages. That's it. 50 pages. So 350. This is a 400 page book. 350 mm-hmm. pages. We get all the way to the sex scene. That shit fucking happens, and I'm done. And I was like, yeah. I'm not gonna read. I'm not gonna do this anymore. That's when I fell asleep. So I read it all day. So I read 350 pages in that first day, and then I uh-huh. put it down. And I was like, I have to talk to Holly about this. So I have to finish this fucking book. And I'm just so pissed off about it. <laughs> and I read the next 50 pages, and I was like, All right, this is pretty good. I like this. I like how everything ties at the end. But yeah, which so what what happens, Holly? So her dad just puppeteered everybody. We find out that. Her best friend this whole time has been locked in the nest, which is basically the code name for the vampire capital building. So her best friend has been in there for three fucking months. And that is where misery is taken to. She is taken to the nest and to this hidey hole room where her best friend Serena has also been stored. Bananas. Bananas. And then they make this, like, weird escape. Okay, whatever. It was stupid. They get out. And they find that they're in the nest. And there's Daddy Dearest just Mm -hmm. sitting at his desk with tinted fingers like Mr. Burns is how I pictured him. (laughs) 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 Just, I mean... I don't know. The fact that it was all daddy the whole time was just so convenient as well. But okay. It's okay. It's fine. And, you know, you have this whole thing with the dad. And then you get all of the the bad guy telling everything about, like, their plot. And you're so stupid. I was doing this the whole time and nobody knew this is why I chose Owen to be my successor and not you because you're a dumb, dumb, dummy girl who loves everybody. Um, yeah, it was a bit heavy handed, the dad. So he tells about Serena, right? Being a. Oh, yeah. So in the end, he also comes out with Serena is half human, half werewolf. Which Serena has slowly like come to the realization that that is who she is and Mm -hmm. has not told Misery anything about these new revelations that she's had about herself. And so the dad the whole time knew about Serena because he's the one that found out about this half red child and his daughter who was being collateral Misery needed a friend. So she kept running away. Mm -hmm. So he paired them two together thinking he would have his watchful eye on both Both of of these because, yeah, yeah, it doesn't want, he doesn't want to get out that there could be an interspecies 
relationship. And then when she started getting older, Serena and started trying to dig in a little bit more when she started discovering that she could, or no, he didn't know that she could shift or sorry. Is that called? Yeah. He did not know that she could shift. She, he thought that she could not shift at all, but yeah. he had access to her medical records and they were all over the place, like a werewolf's medical records. And he knew the correlations and she, he saw her making the correlations and asking these questions and kind of realizing that she might not be entirely human. Yeah. She, because she's a reporter and she found, so she found her biological father. There, right did she no she didn't no she, found... she did not she found about another half human half wear child which happened to be anna which was liana e moreland which was the yeah. le moreland named that misery found the cat battering around in her apartment at the mm -hmm. very beginning of the book which is why yeah. misery married low moreland mm -hmm. yeah so there's yeah. that loose connection. I don't know what, what his diabolical plan was going to be with Serena. I don't think he figured it out, but she was getting too close. So he knew that he had to capture her or whatever. Yeah. So while this long conversation is happening, Lo is finding out that Mick was the person on the surveillance camera that took um, Three. Misery or Serena? Like, I thought it was Serena that... Oh, yeah, that he took Serena. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so he's piecing together, and he's freaking out because he knows Mick has... Because he sent uh, Mick to pick up Misery. Misery, yeah. So he gets involved with Owen, so Misery's brother, and they come up with a plan to walk into the nest, walk into the dad's office, and for funsies, for play acting that Lowe is being arrested or, or he has been captured and by Owen, Owen yeah, by Owen. Uh-huh. And misery for a second believes that Owen Owen's not on her side, not, that they're not like yeah. actual, like BFFs after all. BFFs. And then Serena does the best thing ever. And she like says something she, and the tongue, right? Which I, mm -hmm. now I get why it's there. Okay. Because it, this, it needed it for this moment, mm -hmm. but she says in a very butchered, like she doesn't speak the tongue. She's learned it through misery. Like he's wrong about her shifting and she yeah. can shift on demand. And so she gives that look to low and then they both shift and then shit gets crazy. So crazy. So good. Finally, like the shifter moment that you wanted, you know, throughout this whole book. Yeah, you get like a little and, bit of shifterness throughout the book, but this is like the moment. And then the third act breakup, breakup, stupid, fucking human. So they have that whole fallout with like at the. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent. No, I want to you, hear your tangent. No, tell me, tell me, tell me. What makes so, you so mad? Oh my god. Okay, so it's a real thought, and I liked this part. Is that she was like, well, where do I, where do I live? Where do now? I fit in? Yeah, because that's been her whole thing throughout her whole life. Is where do I fit in? What do I do now? Because she, I think for the first time ever, she's made connections besides Serena, right, in mm -hmm. the werewolf world. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, where I don't even know where I belong anymore because she's never made any connections in the human world besides Serena. She's never made any connections in the vampire world because they all look down on her because she's lived with humans for so long. Mm -hmm. And so finally she's actually made friends in the werewolf world. And she's like, well, I've made friends here. And, but do I belong? But she, yeah. But she's lost again because she's married to the alpha. Mm -hmm. So, or, or, or is she right? Because this yeah. whole diacal follicle plan or whatever is now done because the daddy's gone and they don't need this they can create their own peace in between the vampires and the wares and yeah that whole political thing is going on so she, her and serena go to the where area so they cross the border and yeah. serena goes off and she goes back to lowe's house to i guess get well, a part of her excuse to go to the where world that's hard to say yeah is for serena because she realizes her friend needs to see this side of the world because that is half of her and she's been living in the human world this whole time and so she needs mm -hmm. to learn how to shift and how to be a werewolf she goes in and she goes to her room and all of her things are like packed up and lo's not there and i'm just and i'm sitting here and i'm like 
there's tw- 20 pages left or something. And I'm yeah. like, if they get back together for a reason that I'm not, you like this, don't you? You fucking like this. Oh no, I can see your face. <laughs> she like, no. Okay. Okay. Tell me what, tell uh-huh. me in your words. Maybe I'll like it. Tell me. In no, your words I want to hear what you don't like first. No, you tell me first. You started mm-hmm. this. You go. Lo comes home and they have a mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. And from what I read in my interpretation, it's like she finally just says, I choose you moment, right? Like, yeah. I pick you. I want to be here. And he says, sure. And then they have a moment. That's. It was it was really simplistic, and I di- I honestly I did not completely enjoy that ending. Thank God. I needed a, I needed more. It was too like well Willing. I've, I've only packed up your stuff because I saw what they had in your brothers and like in the nest like the window wise, and I'm just replacing the window so you can see outside during the day, <laughs> so you can Is watch he- our barbecues <laughs> nicely. Yeah. Because he just because he expects her to be there. There's no there's no wooing. There's no apology. There's no being a dickhead and leaving uh, her. Yeah. Any of that. There's nothing, nothing. Yeah, you're right. There wasn't any of that. And maybe it's not needed because of the rescue scene. But even in the rescue scene, you're right. There's doesn't... no conversation about like, I'm sorry for what I said. Yeah, and leave and leaving you there, and you sitting there and making you feel like you don't belong yet again in your life because you don't understand what the wear term mate is. Fuck you, Lo. No. Like, sorry. No. (laughs) Why are you apologizing? You're completely right. You're completely right. There is none of that. You know, you are right. I think I did have a big ick about the ending of the book, and you're putting words to how I felt. And I wasn't sure how I felt about the end because it wasn't satisfying. And that's Mm -hmm. why. That's why it wasn't satisfying. Exactly what you're saying. There was no apology for his reaction or what the words that he, what he said to her. Maybe I just didn't read the fight scene, the saving scene as an apology and like him standing up because I don't get his perspective either. I don't get it. That's true. Yeah. It would have, but I, I think just had for a the chapter, yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's not an excuse to be why he doesn't. He would still need to say the words "I'm sorry," mm-hmm. 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 and I still need her to confront how she feels about him mm-hmm. and about how different he is to anybody else that she has like sniffed blood wise. You know, where's that? Where's that conversation? I desperately needed that. This whole book. Why didn't I get that? Well, so my big question to you before last Mm -hmm. thoughts of book, would you read, if she does write a companion novel, I Mm -hmm. haven't seen anything that she would write. Would would you? (laughs) Me me too. Me too. (laughs) Yes, I will be reading it. A hundred percent. I'll be reading it. I I did enjoy this Can I also tell you though, Mm -hmm. this was released on Tuesday. I went uh-huh. to a midnight party thing at, uh-huh. at my local bookstore that they had. So I stayed up till midnight to get this copy of this book and for for you and went home and I'm just everybody's so excited about it. They're freaking out. There's some people that got some arcs saying this is the best book that they are, they're probably going to read all year. Like oh, blah blah wow. blah. Can I tell you my expectations for this were sky <laughs> high? See, that's your problem. It's my problem. It's the wrong. I set up my expectations too high. I was not ready, I think, uh-huh. for a paranormal romance. I needed to read some shit books because I'm reading real good books right now. And I feel oh, like. Yeah. yeah pew, 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 pew. You know what I mean? Don't it's just kind of like. Don't do that. Ab. Yeah. Let me Let me bring you down to what I'm reading. I mean, is it the best book written? No. To me, is it the best book written by Allie Hazelwood? Maybe. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. No. Um, Mm -mm. You know what's weird? I'm going to say something very controversial. Her check and mate YA novel might might be my top favorite. Really? Interesting. It might be my number one. Okay. I 
loved and there's no spice in it it took my breath away it is the spiciest for a ya there are mentions Mm -hmm. of like sex i mean i do have to say the spice in bride i did not vibe with i didn't really care about i wasn't really there for the scene and honestly a lot of the times i was confused if we were still like front to front back to front front to back like i was confused about body placement a lot of the time throughout the sexy scenes in bride yeah yeah i don't know if anybody the tub the tub scene like when they were like she was in the tub and he was like sitting next like i couldn't understand that in a tub yeah i was also confused about how i wasn't sure if i was supposed to feel as a reader that she was less self-conscious being naked because she was a vampire but at the same time i was thinking but shouldn't she be more self-conscious because really she was raised as a human and she's a virgin and no. she's a virgin and so that part really did not ring true to me as a character trait at what she would do so as a character what are you going to rank what are you going to star rate this book after this conversation oh, it's still going to be a 4 cuz i had a lot of fun reading it that's that's all sometimes i have i have five star reads that i'm like i just love this because it was a fun ride like yeah. it was just I mean, it's, it's not a five because of all the plot holes that we're digging out of. I mean, maybe is it a three? It's like a three and a half, maybe. Three and a half, four. What was it for you? Three at that being generous, three. Because three. I'm not generous, yeah. three, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. say three because I had, I read Midnight Ruin. <gasps> so bad. I, I like breaking a one star. I might. I just did might. I, I think I ranked it a one star. I thought you did too. It was so bad. Awful. 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 So if that's my standard of awful this year, I think this is a three. Because it was still fun. I still liked it. You know, it's yeah. still alley. Yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't put it down. So, okay. All right. Until next time. Until next time. 